Hello everyone, that's the second uh, video that uh, we will be discussing about how to actually organize yourself once you are on a PhD. Of course, I'm not going to be saying things that you will get as an introduction to your PhD from your supervisor, so I'll try to cover other things that perhaps are really useful. So it is important to know that some universities require you to be registered for the PhD and then actually attend some modules for the first maybe one or two years. This is not very common in the UK, but there are countries in which you have actually to register to a certain amount of modules related usually to the PhD. So uh, then you sit the exams and once you pass those exams, then you can continue for your PhD studies. As I said, this is not very common for the UK universities. There are two main types of a PhD. One is a called a PhD by papers and the other is a standard dissertation. So in the first one, what you're asked to do is write a number of papers, publish them, and then put them all together as a thesis. It's not just a collection of papers, of course, it's a thesis which is made by papers. So each chapter is actually a paper, or maybe a couple of chapters is a paper, but they are written in a way that you've written the same paper itself. So you do the job just once for the paper, and then the thesis is almost done with a bit of introduction and a bit of conclusions. That is not very common, but it's not rare neither. So we actually have a lot of universities, even in the UK, that they have PhDs by papers. You can ask and get more information about that. The second style is a standard thesis, the so-called dissertation project, where you have introduction, literature review, a number of chapters, and then you have the conclusions at the end. Usually there are six to 10 different chapters, and it's important to know that in those kind of PhDs as well, you are more likely required to actually publish a paper or two by the PhD by the time yet that you go to your VIPA. Later on, of course, you can publish more and more by the same PhD as long as you've done a very good job. Now, in terms of research styles, there are two main, again, research styles. The first one is the incremental research. This is the most common for PhDs because we don't expect that a PhD student starts something from scratch, from zero. So there is perhaps a project from before, from another PhD student that you're taking over, or is a collaborative program where there are pots of research here and there, and then you pick one and you do your PhD. Usually those are well defined from the beginning and you have a research aim or even some of the objectives of the PhD to begin with. There is also the more kind of open-ended PhDs which are either blue sky research or curiosity driven or a project that you came up yourself uh, by looking at other projects around and those ones they need a bit more guidance you need to be a bit careful about those because you need to make sure that in three to four years time of a full-time PhD you will deliver a PhD of course the supervisor's job is actually to guide you correctly on that. Now let's go through some general tips for the PhD. So you need to do a very good literature review and this is where actually if you have worked on an MSc or an MN's thesis or your first degree on a similar topic will help you a lot because you have already done part of the literature review. So if it's a brand new idea or something that you haven't worked before you must know that you will spend more than six months doing actually a literature review. Literature review is extremely important. You need to understand what's there in that research area. You need to feel more comfortable so then you can start talking about ideas. So a good six month period will take you for a literature review. Also another very good tip is you should keep on speaking to the other members of the group. So if there is a research group or there is a number of PhD students, even if you don't share exactly the same project or even if you have a different supervisor, so long you're in the same discipline, let's say, it's good to talk to those PhD students, especially the ones a bit more mature, so you get an idea, a feeling of how to progress and organize your PhD. It's extremely important. The communication is, is, is a powerful tool. Do not underestimate it. Now, the first year of the, uh, the PhD, the topic will not be well defined you must expect, especially for those blue sky topics, blue sky research topics, that the idea will not be well defined. And this is a bit of a tricky time because you feel that you are not seeing the end of the tunnel. You are going somewhere that you don't really know where you are. And that's fine, it's pretty common for PhDs. 
So uh, the first year is about exploration, is about understanding different types of PhDs, understanding what's the potential, what you can do. So it's a kind of a very, very uh, uh, similar experience to most of the PhD students. That's why you need to organize yourself. So organize yourself, take notes, even some silly notes that you can make today, the very first day of your PhD, may be useful later on. So I always like also putting some dates, so keep the dates so you know how these notes were evolved with the time and, and, and keep on doing the same thing over and over again. That will help you tremendously. You can also use software like the Miro.com software that you can find for free and you can start putting like a map of an idea. So mapping your idea and uh, you, can, you can formulate the methodology and you can share that with your supervisor or other PhD students and you can all play together to actually uh, uh, fine-tune your objectives and build the idea in a more efficient manner. So you can use, there are plenty of tools online that you can use and that can help you to, to actually organize that thinking, all these thoughts. In terms of reports, especially the first year you have quite a few to do. So uh, usually there is a very small progress report after three months you've started a PhD, but a bit more important one at the six months of the PhD. So start preparing the report from the beginning. Whatever you're reading, whatever you're actually searching and exploring, start taking notes so you can build that report. My main comment about this report is focus on the quality, not the quantity. A lot of students, what they do is they just gather a lot of information, put them all together and they say, here is what I'm doing the last six months. But this is not helpful at all. What you should be doing is to try to find what's really important out of these and prepare a kind of a short report, but it's got quality that is required for a PhD. That will also uh, give you a big thumbs up from your supervisor. So what it matters is quality, methodology, and a very good planning so far, right? Okay, you're following me. Let's now move on to the next report, which is the biggest one after the actual PhD that you will submit at the end of your uh, studies. And that is the so-called first year report. In some universities they call it also transfer report because what's happening in fact is, is that you're transferring from the MPhil, a Master of Philosophy, to the PhD, to the Philosophy Doctorate. It's where you actually go through an interview process, like a proper vibe, a defense process, it's much shorter than the real one at the end, and you have submitted a report, the examiner, usually an internal examiner from the university, is looking at it, and what you need to actually demonstrate is that you are capable of doing a PhD. So you have to demonstrate that you have done some research, that you are at a good track, that you now have formulated an idea and the approach to the problem, and that you know how to write a part of the PhD because you've written your uh, first part of it, which is the transfer report, and also that you have planned very well what's next, especially if you are a PhD student who has to do a lot of experimental work and anything can go wrong with experiments, they can slow down, if you don't have the resources, maybe you will delay the experiments for several months or the whole PhD will be delayed. Make sure that you have clarified all these things and you have demonstrated that you've thought about all sorts of problems and obstacles that you may face. It's extremely important, will help you a lot for getting over the transfer. A few now planning tips that I would like to share with you. Number one, keep meeting your supervisor as often as possible. If you can have weekly meetings, that's perfect. Even shorter meetings will do the job. If you can have even more than weekly meetings, is even much better. Sometimes you don't have time to prepare yourself, so weekly meetings for me, I think they work very well. Meet your supervisor for an hour every week will make sure that you are in a good track. Because the problem with PhD sometimes is that you may get a different sort of curve, a different track, which is not really leading you to a PhD. So make sure that you mitigate that sort of scenario. Get prepared at every meeting is my number two tip. So uh, make sure that you get prepared, you have a few slides with you or you have a PowerPoint presentation. You actually share with your supervisor what you've been doing. You have specific questions to ask so that you have a much more fruitful discussion with your supervisor. 
it will help tremendously both of you for progressing uh, nicely and really smoothly with the PhD. Stop overthinking and start doing research. A lot of PhD students, and it's not only in academia, I must admit, they spend a lot of time thinking, thinking, thinking without even doing anything. So at the beginning, you have to start doing, otherwise it will take you a year until you start doing your first analysis or your first modeling or your first experiment. So start doing research from the first few months onwards. So number four is work hard and make sure that the PhD is not a nine to five job. There's no problem at all with working eight hours only a day for a PhD, although I find it a bit not too much, but yet you can make an excellent work. However, a PhD needs a bit of thinking, a bit of searching around. So you cannot really quantify the number of hours equally with what they would have been if you're working in industry. So I would say that, especially the first year or so, you will have to spend more time on the PhD. It's not a standard nine to five job. And if you just take it as this, maybe you will have to extend for a year or so your PhD. So unless the PhD is something much shorter, uh, from what I've seen all these years in academia, I think students working longer hours than this, especially in the first year or the first one, one and a half years when you have to develop the idea and do something, then it's actually rolling. And the final tip is think about what you want to achieve by this PhD. So start thinking at some point, with the help of your supervisor, how many papers you want to, to deliver, what kind of papers they will be, where are you going to publish, in which conference you will go. So start actually building backwards all the milestones that you need to put down in order to achieve the aim and the objectives of the PhD. So do that. The earlier that you do that, the better it will be for you. So that's it for the moment. The next video will be on the methodology, uh, on how to approach specific problems in the PhD and a bit of like uh, what the PhDs in engineering look like. Until then, bye bye.